Usually when we do stories about famous people connected to St. Louis, it's people who grew up around here and then went somewhere else to become famous. Catherine Dunham's story, well, it goes the other way. She was already a famous, even world famous dancer when she decided in the 1960s to move to East St. Louis and open a performing arts center. We thought Black History Month was a good time to rerun a story that Anne Marie Berger did with her back in 2005. We didn't know it, but this would turn out to be Catherine Dunham's last on-camera interview. I think that people have lost something. They've lost the idea of what dance is. Everybody seems to be in it just for a matter of personal pleasure. And there's more to it than that, you know. Such as such as what? That what are what are? Such as expressing the uh, your culture, expressing the meaning of your life, the meaning of the people that you came from, the meaning meaning of your family, and your roots and that kind of thing. Dance does this, you know. It's in there. We just have to take it out and use it. In 2006, Catherine Dunham would have celebrated her 97th birthday. However, she passed away just one month before reaching that milestone. But not even her death could prevent her loyal friends and students from both sides of the river from celebrating her life and legacy. Hi, how are you? So on June 22nd, Miss Dunham's birthday, Hundreds of people jammed the Desley Theater at the Missouri Historical Society to pay tribute to the matriarch of black dance. <laughs> Catherine Dunham was born outside of Chicago in 1909. Her mother died when young Katie was just four years old and for the next few years, she and her older brother, Albert Jr., lived with relatives as their father traveled as a salesman. It was during this time that Katie became exposed to the world of entertainment, going to local theaters, seeing live performances up close. Dunham began dancing herself, appearing in various productions, but planned a career as an anthropologist, not a dancer. So in 1928, Dunham enrolled at the University of Chicago. While she worked on her anthropology degree, she did continue to take dance lessons and perform. She even founded her own student dance company. During her studies, she was introduced to the concept of dance as a cultural symbol and began to study the anthropological roots of dance. After her graduation in 1935, Dunham accepted a fellowship to study anthropology and dance in the Caribbean. There, she earned the trust of the natives of Haiti and Jamaica, inviting her to join them in their most sacred rituals. It was this experience that changed the focus of Dunham's life and the development of modern dance. Dunham returned to Chicago in 1937 and immediately began incorporating African and Caribbean styles of movement into a new modern dance technique. Her technique, which is totally different than what any of us had ever had, but even today it's different. It's a whole, it, it, she really created a technique that is unique unto herself. In a nation where there had been no path for black dancers, Dunham formed this country's first black dance company and took them all the way to Broadway and Hollywood. She just got into the center of your body and I will tell you something, there wasn't one part of your body that didn't move. It was extraordinary. Catherine Dunham and her dance company received enthusiastic reviews from both critics and audiences. They toured throughout the United States, Latin America, Europe, and Dunham didn't just receive praise for her dancing and choreography. She was recognized as a scholar and anthropologist. 
she just was interested in other things. This was a very intelligent woman. Dunham broke down dance barriers, blending her unique dance movements with other genres such as ballet. But she often found herself on the front lines of discrimination, performing in theaters where she herself would not be allowed to buy a ticket. In 1944, at a performance in Louisville, Kentucky, the crowd cheered for more after the curtain closed. But instead of an encore, Dunham announced to the all-white crowd that she and her company would not return until people like her could sit with people like them. And do you realize how hard that must have been? At that time, she was really breaking all kinds of barriers and she was going out on a limb and she was putting herself up there going against the, the tide. And um, this was a very difficult time and she was one of the first. In 1941, Dunham married John Pratt, a costume and set designer who happened to be white. In the beginning, their friends and families disapproved of their union. Interracial marriages were not common in those days, but the couple's obvious devotion to one another dispelled the negativity. Dunham would only wear costumes designed by her husband, and their collaboration resulted in her exquisite stage presence. In 1952, Pratt and Dunham adopted a daughter, Marie Christine. And Dunham and her new family toured the world with her dance troupe. I would certainly say that the travel has been one of the very important things. And if I had not traveled, I, there are so many things I just wouldn't know. I think it's 57 countries of the world. <laughs> and that's a lot. Her contributions to her craft are immeasurable. But to the people in this auditorium, it was her human nature they were most grateful for. Miss Dunham has a way of pulling the good out of everyone. Uh, at that point in time, there was a lot of gang rivalry going on, and she just could not understand how these people were hurting each other. So she tried to channel that anger into something positive. Dunham offered the young men and women of East St. Louis alternatives to violence through what she knew best, dance. To her, dance wasn't just simply moving your body. It had a much deeper meaning that young people needed to discover. I want them to take nothing for granted, to take everything as possible. And that, I think, is a big problem here for people to be able to understand that they have it. They just have to use it. 